Alright guys, now that we know that our computer can post up fine, we're going to be connecting our CD drive and our storage drive. Alright, so um, we showed you guys these in the part video, but I'm just going to do a little quick thing again. It's a Seagate 500 gigabyte um, Barracuda, 7200 RPM, and then we have a generic uh, Asus DVD rewriter. Now for many guys who may be reusing parts, it's possible to reuse old CD drives or disk drives. In that case, I mean hard drives, but what you want to check for is one, if they're SATA or if um, they're the other type, which is basically a, a, ATA, I believe. Yeah, and that's parallel ribbon, ATA usually. That's with the ribbon cables. And while modern motherboards often do have a spot for ribbon cables, such as you right can here. see there, um, the speed difference and the price difference now especially, is it's just better to upgrade. Yeah, as you can see here, this is an, a really old drive. It's a Maxter. Um, it's a 200 gigabyte, so not that old. Probably one of the later ones, but as you can see, that's the connection that um, the data connection with the ribbon cable, and then the Molex connector, which they have been replaced by the SATA data right there, and then SATA power. <coughs> oh, sorry, SATA power right there. Um, so these are SATA data cables. Um, and these usually come with your motherboard, and they may come with a drive as well, but um, keep in mind that this motherboard that we got was recertified, and it didn't come with any accessories, so we had to have these before, but um, we were prepared for that. And then um, your power connections look like this. The SATA ones are just a thin strip, um, as opposed to a Molex, which looks like this. Again, any modern <coughs> power supply should have these connections. If your power supply does not have these connections, then we would first advise you to probably get a better power supply because just like the graphics card, if your power supply can't support these technologies, which aren't even that new, um, then you, it's probably not worth it to continue with that power supply. All right, so as you see here, Max just connected the power supply power cables for the SATA drives, and now he's going to connect the SATA data cable from the motherboard to the actual drive. Now keep in mind that right now it doesn't matter which slot you put it in, but once you actually get um, your operating system installed, you want to keep your drives in a consistent um, slot in your motherboard because the BIOS does recognize which slot it is in. Whoops. All right. And guys, um, I would highly recommend, I know this is a bit tedious and I don't even do it, but this is why I'm recommending it because it's bothering me a lot of times. Um, if you can see here, there's all the six the six um, SATA connectors, and then there's two more here, and then this motherboard has another obscure one, like behind the graphics card. But what I mean is that um, you want to know which one of these is which. As you can see here, it's labeled SATA 8, 9, SATA 0, 1, right there, 2, 3. So um, if you can memorize or just like Jot write it down, something, which one of these is which, is going to save you um, so much time especially if one of your drives goes bad and you know and you want to know which one it is and if you're doing any sort of raid setup it's extremely important if you are planning on unplugging the drives ever because you want to plug them back into the same one so that they're um so that it's just easy for you to keep it, track of it so actually I'm not going to use this cuz that's set a um 8 9 I'm going to stick in 0 1 which I believe this is the 0 and then for the other one um just stick that in slot 1 and then right down here under the drive. All right, so that should be our DVD drive in zero and the hard disk in one. Okay, so now we're just gonna boot up again um, to test to see if the CD drive and the hard drive are working. And then of course we're gonna move on to um, kind of the conclusion of the build, which is installing the motherboard into the case, kind of tidying up the power cables and um, adding of course all the goodies such as Windows or whatever operating system you use and all that stuff. So here we are um, posting again and this is with our hard drive and CD drive connected and the reason why the video beforehand we did not have these connected is because we want to of course eliminate any unnecessary variables in case something does go wrong. Alright so I was hitting delete there to get into the BIOS while it boots up and if we see here the first option, the standard CMOS features, you want to go there. That's basically going to give you a list like this of all of your um, devices that are plugged in right now. 
I'm not sure why it does this sat is 0, 2, 1, 3, 4, 5, but um, we did plug them into the right spot. As you can see, SATA 0 has our Asus DVD drive, and SATA 1 has our ST3500, um, so that's the Seagate, I guess, 3, and then their 500 gigabyte model number is kind of confusing, but mm -hmm. we know which one is which. <clears throat> and if we can go here, we can test this, hit that, see it opens perfectly, it closes, and um, so that looks good. As long as this recognizes them correctly, that's pretty much all you can do at this point. Um, but you can uh, have good faith that they're working in perfect condition. All right, so now that we've tested everything outside of the case and eliminated any sort of hassle that would have occurred if we did have a problem while the motherboard was inside the case, we can now kind of um, you know turn off the power and bring out the um, HAF 922 and install the motherboard and get this build rolling. All right. So look forward to us installing this into the case.